Hi everyone, my name is Charlie, most people call me Moose, and I'm the writer for Now This Nerd. I'm usually just off screen over there, cackling in the background to Kaya's jokes. <laughs> there we go, there's the laugh. I feel good now. But I'm coming out from behind the camera because today, I wanna to talk some anime. Pacific Rim Uprising has me thinking about how Guillermo del Toro's, how Academy Award winner Guillermo del Toro's monster fighting franchise owes a huge debt to Japan. You've got the kaiju, a not even subtle shout out to the giant monster genre of the same name, and of course, the mighty Jaegers, which pay homage to one of the country's coolest cultural exports, Mecha. The series isn't shy about its influences, but Mecha is a pretty specific subcategory. And today, I wanna to see if Jaegers really fit the bill. We'll see how the standards came to be, whether the Jaegers stack up, and give a rundown on what makes a Mecha. Mecha derives from mechanical. In Japan, it's used as a catch-all term for computers, cars, or any kind of machinery, really. But in English-speaking countries, we use Mecha to refer to the genre they call giant robot, or robot anime, or robot manga, depending on the medium. Now, categories are fluid and there aren't really concrete lines, but as the art form developed, mecha evolved some distinct traits that set it apart from other genres. First and foremost, a mech lacks autonomy. When Asumu Tezuka's Astro Boy aired on January 1st, 1963, it gave birth to an industry overnight. The first and most influential TV anime ever starred a robot, and looking back, we can already see some primordial mecha tropes start to take shape, like how Astro reconfigures his body into devastating weaponry, and by that I mean guns come out of his butt. No! But it's the same way later mecha like Macross would just transform and just unleash the f***ing fury. But there's still that pesky problem of free will. He's sentient, he's intelligent, he can feel, he can think, he can love. Just like the Transformers on Cybertron or the Iron Giant. Ooh. Mechas, on the other hand, are weapons. They're tools of war. You wouldn't expect your AC-130 gunship to have hopes and dreams, but the line can be blurry sometime, like the Evas in Evangelion. Without revealing the secret sauce and spoiling the mind-bending saga, let's just say there's a lot going on under the hood. But just like there's nothing in the book that says a dog can't play basketball. He's right. Ain't no rule that the dog can't play basketball. There's no rule that your mecha has to be made of metal. That does make controlling them a little trickier though. It takes more than a joystick and a throttle. The organic EVAs have a hole in their spine. Once the pilots are plugged in, they're immersed in a breathable liquid that links their brain to the unit for an unparalleled level of control. Most of the time, anyway. In Pacific Rim, it takes two pilots drifting their minds together to harness the power of a Jaeger because a single person just doesn't have the neural capacity. It's a mark in favor of their mechdom, but by that criteria, couldn't you also say that Iron Man's armor technically counts as a mech? Well, I'm sorry, Tony, your suit might be a mindless war machine, but it fails the test because it's just too shrimpy. When it comes to Mecha, size matters. As a doppelganger of his creator's dead son, Astro Boy is locked forever in the purgatory of eternal prepubescence. In other words, he's too short to ride the Mecha coaster. The kid is too little. Family fun. Child too small. But hot on Astro's rocket heels came a robot called Tetsujin 28, better known in America as Gigantor. Gigantor. He's a repurposed World War II doomsday weapon who's literally at the whim of a 10-year-old boy. And at 30 feet tall, he's definitely no slouch. Gigantor's creator followed up with a similar show for live action TV. In Japan, it was called Giant Robo, and I'm just so torn as to whether that sounds cooler than Gigantor. Giant Robo, Gigantor. Giant Robo, Gigantor. 
I don't know, folks. You tell me. Leave a comment. But, oh, even better, so when Giant Robo came to America, it was known as, you ready? Johnny Sacco and his flying robot. Which, that takes the cake as far as I'm concerned. Whatever the hell you want to call him, Giant Robo introduced Mecha to televised tokusatsu, a Japanese term for shows or movies with a lot of special effects. Throw in some superheroes and a dash of kaiju from series like Ultraman, and you've got the great granddaddy of Super Sentai, AKA Power Rangers. Speaking of which, the OG Megazord was about 130 feet tall, which comes in just a little shorter than Voltron, but a class above your average Gundam. That's still pretty small in the scheme of things. He's half as big as the biggest Evas, and in Gurren Logan, they've got mechs vast enough to fling galaxies at each other. Mech could come in any size you want, as long as it's huge. And as for Jaegers, Gypsy Danger maxes out at around 288 feet, which is three feet taller than the Flatiron Building. That sure sounds like a mecha to me. After all, a size advantage never hurts when canceling the apocalypse. No pulse. And the PPDC have spared no steel in defense of humanity. They're the finest fighting core mankind could hope for, which brings us to the last essential element of mecha, the military. As nerds, we have to nitpick here. Gigantor and Giant Robo aren't true mechs because they were remote controlled. They were essentially drones in the hands of children. A pilot has to be physically present inside the apparatus to be a mech. They're the ultimate fusion of man and machine. Which brings us to Majinga Zeto, or Mazinger Z, the first real mech. The titular Titan was made of Japanium, a metal mine from an ancient meteor that crashed into Mount Fuji, and yet more evidence for the theory that Black Panther is secretly anime. I mean, who are better folks? Vegeta, Michael B. Jordan, or The New Day? I personally think The New Day rocks. More importantly, Mazinger has a cockpit. His pilot drives a little hovercraft right into his head. The creator was inspired after he got stuck in traffic and wondered, what if, instead of sitting in a car, I was behind the wheel of a 60-foot tall bipedal robot? Earlier robots were toys, but Mazinger was a vehicle. You can see it in his eyes, literally. They're blank and dehumanized compared to the older designs that had cartoony black pupils. But Mazinger still had a lot of personality. Japanese fans were interested in something a little more serious. Two big sci-fi imports influenced Japan in the 60s and 70s. Robert Heinlein's novel Starship Troopers, which helped introduce the concept of space marines and mass-produced powered armor, and, of all things, Thunderbirds, the British puppet show about a family of adventurers with a fleet of specialized vehicles. Basically, just think Team America with less nudity and no Matt Damon. It seems unlikely, but these shitty marionettes and their transforming conveyances with cool code names set the stage for the most iconic mecha of all, Mobile Suit Gundam. Creator Yoshiyuki Tomino wanted to give the fans the hard sci-fi action they craved. His mechs break down, their guns jam, they run out of ammo, and their tech is based in semi-plausible science. More importantly, they're part of a military force. They're trained pilots using specialized tech. And their opponents aren't monsters or aliens, they're the people on the other side of the war. Gundam wasn't a big hit when it first aired, but a theatrical release helped fuel its rise, and once those model kits and toys hit the market, whew! I want them. I want many of them. The Robo Military Industrial Complex allowed for all kinds of awesome designs and cool accessories. And soon, the toys became the driving force behind a ton of new anime and later video games. We don't really get into the games too much, but I just have to shout out my absolute favorite mech of all time, Metal Gear Rex. I love you, baby. Liquid wasn't kind enough for you. I wish you all the best. It's not over. Not yet. Thanks to all that sweet merch money, Gundam was able to get away with complex stories and deep characterization as long as they kept pumping out Toyetic new mechs to make a buck. How Toyetic can you get? Toyetic is a word created by marketing people. It means an object or device that could easily become a mass-produced toy. 
It's a win-win for everyone. You can have your trippy, philosophical, gain axe mind fucks if that's your thing. And if not, then you can just bury yourself and sconce yourself in toys and models and kits and oof, everything. The world of Pacific Rim embraces the kaiju silliness of tokusatsu shows with the hardline military approach of Macross and Gundam to create a new evolution of the mecha tradition. Jaegers are mechs in every sense of the word, and their entire universe is a loving tribute to the decades of Japanese culture that paved the way. Hi everybody, thank you so much for watching my first video. I Hope I did a good job. Most of my research for this actually came from a government study funded by Japan to basically say how awesome and important Mecha is. It's really cool, there's a link in the description, and while you're there, leave a comment. Let me know what your favorite Mecha is, and of course, please subscribe to Now This Nerd. Thank you.